Hello and welcome again. So now, now we are moving on from our USML Step 1 2021 Microbiological Revision section where we, where we are on page 146 and we will be discussing about this Vibrio cholerae. Previously we have discussed about this gram negative curve route that is the Campylobacter jejuni. Now we will be discussing about this Vibrio cholera. So Vibrio cholera talking about this Vibrio cholera. This is the one of the organism. If you remember the above tree where we have the gram negative curve rods among them we have three organism Campylobacter jejuni, Vibrio cholerae and Helicobacter, Helicobacter pylori. They all are gram negative. They all are curved. They all are oxidase positive. But the difference is Campylobacter jejuni was able to grow in 42 degrees Celsius and special media the Skiro media or Campy, Campybacter media say. But when it comes to the Vibrio cholerae, they have the special characteristics of growing in an alkaline environment. So they can resist high pH, they can survive in the high pH and this makes them unique. They also are responsible for cholera which can lead to a acute watery diarrhea. That's the water loss is so much that from a single day, in a single day, even 20 liter of your water can be lost. So this infection is very severe. In the past, when we have not developed this uh, isotonic normal saline, the people used to die because we don't have anything to give intravenous. So this, since we cannot give water, normal tap water, it will swell your RBC and rust and you will die. You cannot give you salty water because it will shrink and again there will be the hemolysis and death. So we cannot give the normal tap water or say a salty water inside your body. We need an isotonic solution and we have made very later before that any acute water diarrhea, especially this cholera, people used to die. So it was a very concern in the previous days. Even nowadays, if you are in the remote places where we have a lack of health facilities, in that places if cholera outbreak occurs, then lots of people in the village died. Even in the certain hilly region of Nepal, we heard about this cholera outbreak and there are the death of the people as well in present 21st century as well. So this bug is very important and it has one another property of its motility it's called a darting motility or shooting motility due to presence of this polar flagella you can see over here these are the one flagella that's help into the active motile like it's a shooting if you are shooting a gun it will move like a very fast in the same manner of fast movement will seen under the microscope in a hanging drop preparation so let's go through the uh, our uh, text they are saying it is gram negative flagellated polar flagella comma sept that is important whereas the previously we have talked about this uh, campylobacter jejuni that was the gull wing sept so there was two gull wing appearance but here it will be just a comma sept they all are gram negative oxidase positive which we have talked about grow in alkaline medium and that's make it unique from campylobacter campylobacter jejuni and helicobacter pylori so we can differentiate by growing in the alkaline medium endemic to developing countries like Nepal produce profuse rice, rice watery diarrhea via enterotoxin that permanently activate the cyclic MP and increase that activates the GS protein and increase the cyclic MP. So the, the thing is that they produce profuse rice watery diarrhea via how, how this profuse rice watery diarrhea is produced by the enterotoxin. This endotoxin and exotoxin we have already discussed. Although this is a gram negative bacteria, it will cause endotoxic if it, in, if it uh, comes in your blood, but they are not causing you the systemic infection. They are usually causing the localized GI infection. So they will release the exotoxin that is called enterotoxin that will go and bind to your epithelial cell and then activate the GS protein and increase cyclic AMP and then again increase the this flux of the sodium and water. We will show you in the picture. Transmitted via the ingestion of contaminated water or undercooked food. So they can transmit it by an ingestion of contaminated water or undercooked food. Treat promptly with the oral rehydrated solution. If severe, we have to give the IV saline and even doxycycline is the drug of choice which will reduce the duration of symptoms. So the source of contaminated will be water. This is waterborne disease and sometimes uncooked food that is the raw shellfish. There is another species, Vibrio vulnificus. We'll go to that. Let's first see about this. Vibrio cholera is a species of gram-negative, facultative anaerobes and coma sept bacteria. The bacteria naturally live in the brackish or salty water where they attach themselves easily to the chitin containing cell of the crab, scream and other shellfish. So when we talk about this mechanism, you can see there is the uh, this biofilm allows the bacteria to survive in the nutrition poor and stressful environment like pH and high temperature. Vibrio cholera switch between a biofilm and Fankent mediated by secondary messenger molecule within the gut, Vibrio can switch to a motile lifestyle to impair the host mucosa. Here is the important thing is that 
they have this release the cholera toxin by which they act on the your epithelial cell and cause the flux of the, this chloride and water from your cell into the lumen you can even see over here this this is their ganglion synergy receptor since um, if the uh, chloride toxin is re released it has a and b subunit b helps in binding a enter inside your cell once a enter this is the b and this is the a so a enter inside your cell it goes into the endosome this will be transported into a cell and then activate this gs protein once gs protein is activated they will activate the actually adrenal cyclase the adrenal cyclase will help in increasing the cyclic mp once the cyclic mp will increase in your in your body so you can see over here if one cyclic cyclic mp is increased this cyclic mp causes a flux of your this water electrolyte that is the chloride and bicarbonate for your body into the lumen and from the lumen it will uh, pass out through the, the you know their gi track is just a canal from where the all the stool or all the watery content and will chloride control will pass through your uh, defecation so in in this way they will develop diarrhea this all your fluid inside your cell has now come into the lumen and that will lost as a diarrhea so this is actually a cause voluminous rice watery why they are called rice watery diarrhea because <clears throat> you have to see they have they can cause rice watery diarrhea because they have let me show you here they can cause this rice watery profuse rice watery diarrhea because once this uh, what happened once the, the diarrhea developed there is a so much loss of water because of that there is no stool content in it you can only find water and water and if you see that water it appears as the if you wash your uh, rice if you have a f habit of eating rice then uh, in uh, south asia we have a culture of eating all the time rice only so if you wash the rice it will appear as the whitish color that is the f uh, fluid after washing rice and similar whitish color will be seen in the cholera patient and that is makes a distinguished feature and we can diagnose clinically as well and it's need immediate treatment so we start the oral, oral rehydration solution or iv saline and start doxycycline as well coming to the point okay so motility we have talked about this motility this is has the shooting or darting motility you can see this they has have the polar flagella and from the polar flagella they can elong from one they move elongate slower and then elongate faster and then can go, grow as a starting shooting motility or fast motility you can so let me talk about the culture of organism how can we diagnose it we can diagnose by one of the method i have told you this was a diagnosis was by performing the hanging drop preparation where can we can see this motility of the organism we take the stool sample make a hanging drop under the microscope and observe if we see a moving motile organism we report it as a gram negative motile organism cholera like organism seen then we culture the for culture we are culturing this tool this tool there are the tons of normal flora so we cannot culture in a normal media like blood agar mekonki agar so we go for the selective media that selective media is known as the tcbs media that is thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose agar tcbs that it makes is very important you have at least understood where you can culture the vibrio cholera the media is known as the thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose agar you can at least remember tcbs this thiosulfate citrate bile salt this all make them inhibit all the organism and only allow the growth of this vibrio cholera so this make there are the some inhibitory component that inhibit all the growth of your normal flora and only allow this vibrio cholera to grow so this is thios tcbs thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose agar here is the sucrose has been fermented by this vibrio cholera and since this is a green media actually but after fermentation after growth the colony will appear as a yellow so if any organism yellow in color that has been seen in a green background that is a tcbs media then you have to understand they are talking about this vibrio cholera okay now <clears throat> let's move to the we have understood all these things these are gram negative comma said oxidase positive growing alkaline media endemic to develop to different countries produce rice Profuse rice watery diarrhea. We have seen the mechanism behind this enterotoxin that permanently activates this GS, causing increased cyclic KMP. They are sensitive to the stomach acid, so you need a high dose of your bacteria to cause infection. Even they can come in a low dose when you have a decreased gas. You have increased gastric pH, so gastric pH has been damaged. Suppose you are taking proton pump inhibitor or any antacids that increase the pH. So once pH is increased, what happened? Now your alkaloid goes to the neutral environment, and the bacteria low dose can pass that environment and goes to your intestine and cause infection. Normally the pH is around 2.5, 1.5 to 2.5, which all this 
Biblical cholera get killed. There will be the, if there are the high loads only, then they pass your stomach acid and then goes your alkaline environment of your intestine that is duodenum or jejunum. So before going that, they can die. So they require the high load dose that we have to understand. So require high inoculum unless they has increased decreased gastric acidity due to this proton inhibitor or antacid transmission via a contaminated water or undercooked food treat promptly with oral addition solution. There is another another bacteria of the same species known as the Vibrio vulnificus that is the gram negative bacilli usually find in the marine environment that's make that's make it important what is marine environment this is actually a salty water environment or we can say uh, sea environment that cause severe wound infection or septicemia due to exposure to this contaminated sea water so a person who is uh, <clears throat> has work with the sea water they are uh, occupational work or say continuously exposed with the sea water they might get this infection so if they are giving a scenario about the patient who is working continuously in the sea water and have developed infection in any site so they will develop cellulitis and eventually septicemia and may even progress to death so presence of cellulitis that can progress to necrotizing fasciitis in a high risk patient especially those with the liver disease serious serious own infection required surgical debridement so unlike a vibrio cholera which causes the local infection that causes gastroenteritis and loss of your water acute watery diarrhea water and electrolyte in your stool the vibrio vulnificus are the organism that are also the vibrio species but they are responsible mainly for your own infection cellulitis and even septicemia even leading to necrotizing fasciitis in liver cirrhosis patient so the if you are they are talking about the vibrio vulnificus they will tell you about the salty water they will tell you about the liver cirrhosis they will tell you about this cellulitis and necrotizing fasciitis and now you have to identify the bacteria or now you have to understand the scenario. Serious wound infection requires surgical deprivement. Let me <clears throat> take you once more to this uh, final one, the Kaplan microbiology, where we are talking about this Vibrio cholera. They are the gram negative rods with the polar frailer, oxidase positive. They grow on the alkaline environment, but not on the acidic media. They, they cannot grow on the acidic media. They grow in the thiosulfate, citrate, bile salt, sucrose agar. So this is very important. This is the selective media. That selective media are the media where we inhibit the other organism and allow the required organism to grow. So this is the selective media. The species of medical importance are Vibrio cholerae, Vibrio parahemolyticus, and Vibrio vulnificus. In Vibrio cholera, with the string fisheries, rice watery diarrhea grow on the TCBS agar. So that's make it very important. Okay, so you have to understand we are talking about this rice watery diarrhea that helps in grow them. The vinegar patient will have non-inflammatory diarrhea because it is toxin mediated, rice watery stool, dehydration from cholera, travel to endemic area. These are gram negative, polar flagella, oxidase positive organism that grow in the alkaline environment. This will be the enough for you to understand or to say about anything about making the vinegar. The all point is over here. The, the reservoir is in the human colon, no vertebrate animal carriers is required. Okay, human carriers may persist after untreated infection for month after infection, permanent carrier state is very rare. The transmission is oropharyngeal, we understand that, sensitive to the stomach acid. So the patient who are taking proton bond inhibitors, so pentoprazole or antacid, that have the more chance to get this infection. Requires high dose that 10 to 7 organism if stomach acid is normal. Pathogenesis, we know <coughs> they have mortality, <coughs> sorry, mucinase and toxin coagulated pili attached to the intestine mucosa. The main pathogenesis is this cholera toxin, which is known as the cholera enterotoxin, that is similar to the E. coli heat level toxin that increases the cyclic, that activates this GS protein, causing increase in the activating the cyclic adrenal cyclase, causing increase in the cyclic AMP, that causes efflux of the chloride and water from your intestinal epithelium and come out into the lumen and that loss in your water. This is cholera, this rice watery, tremendous fruit loss, hypovolemic shock, if not treated. Diagnosis, stool culture on TCBS agar. We have already completed and if we do, we do oxidase test, it will be positive. Treatment will be fluid and electrolyte replacement and doxycycline or superfluxacin to shorten the disease and reduce carriers. Resistance of tetracycline have been reported but this is not much important over here. Prevention is proper sanitation and new vaccine. If you are going to give any antibiotic that will be a doxycycline at present you have to thank. Other Vibrio species are Vibrio parahemolyticus and Vibrio vulnificus. We have on Vibrio parahemolyticus. Again, reservoir is the marine life conjunction of undercooked or raw seafood. So it is related to the seafood that causes again gastroenteritis, watery diarrhea and crampy abdominal pain. The treatment is self-limiting. 
we have talked about this vibrio valnificus in your us step one well they are usually related to the brackish water or oyster conjunction of undercooked food or raw sieved lead to the gastroenteritis same as above they also can cause swimming in the brackish water or sucking oyster leads to the cellulitis that is rapidly spreading difficult to treat and then drug of choice will be tetracycline or third generation cephalosporin so vibrio para vibrio cholera gastroenteritis vibrio para hemolyticus gastroenteritis vibrio valnificus it will leads to gastroenteritis if it if you eat this consumption undercooked or raw seafood but if you are swimming in the water, salty water and you develop the infection you develop the cellulitis then that leads to your necrotizing fasciitis especially in the liver cirrhosis patient so that all about this vibrio cholera you just you have to remember they are the gram negative corp mass shaped oxidase positive motile organism they can grow in the alkaline environment if you culture you can culture in tcbs aga they have this cholera enterotoxin that has caused as the cholera and that caused the rice watery diarrhea profuse amount of water loss from your body thank you